This very special purple rice begins its long journey in northern Laos. The local farmers call it Khao Kham, and here it's eaten only on special holidays. Bunmi Salekeo is a rice farmer. He first came into contact with the fair trade movement about 10 years ago. I started to earn a little more, and that improved life for my family a bit. But fair trade should benefit the environment and the village as well. But recently, fair trade rice in Kasi has been facing more obstacles. Sisel Yao Sveng Suksa, who leads a Laotian fair trade association, is visiting the region. Bunmi Salikiao shows him some of the local fair trade projects. There ought to be an irrigation dam here. The idea was to use the existing rice fields more efficiently to stop farmers clearing forest for new fields. The dam was much too small for the needs of our farmers here. We used it for a while, but now it's falling apart. Many villagers in Kasi think they've profited too little from fair trade in purple rice. Bunmi Salikeo is among those who says the sales figures are still too low. So more and more farmers are doing other sorts of business. Chemical fertilizers and pesticides are in demand as never before. A neighboring farmer, Lu Eng, has decided to try them out. Although most fair trade producers reject their use. Instead of fair trade rice, he's now growing maize for businesses from Vietnam. Neighboring China and Vietnam have been currying favor with the farmers here for several years because there's still quite a lot of land available in Laos, land that could provide profitable yields. Luang thinks he's made a good deal. Growing maize like this is just extremely effective. Growing rice with environmentally friendly methods isn't as productive, so now I'm earning a lot more. Quick money versus sustainability. When the local government in Kasi lacked enough money for a new schoolhouse roof, fair trade activist Siseliao Sveng Suksa's hour had come. The proceeds from selling purple rice provided the rest of the funding, but he too sees that in the long term it's not enough for the farmers. I think it's a farmer's daily life that preoccupies them. They need money now, not in the distant future. But I still hope that we can make fair trade more commercially viable, and then they'll show more interest. The purple rice is processed in the Laotian capital, Vientiane. That provides jobs for about 50 women. They separate the good rice grains from those that can't be used. It's not an exciting job, but for many it's a good opportunity to earn money. Most of the other produce, like the maize, leaves the country unprocessed. This worker says she earns the equivalent of about 70 euros a month. That's slightly more than an average worker's wage in Laos. So as a promoter of fair trade, Siseliao Sveng Suksa constantly tries to find new markets and cultivation areas for purple rice. He thinks fair trade still has great potential in Laos. We can't compete with our neighbors Vietnam and Thailand in quantity and price because they have better infrastructure and they have seaports. So we're concentrating on fair trade and quality. The last steps before the rice leaves the country. From every kilo of rice sold, five cents go to social projects like the school in Kasi. The finished mixture contains 20% purple rice and 80% ordinary white rice. After traveling 9,000 kilometers, the rice reaches its destination, a fair trade shop in Germany. 
Neither the sales staff nor the customers here know about the difficulties involved in cultivating and producing it in Laos. People are excited to find purple rice because it's unusual. But we want to sell quality above all. Customers should buy it because it's good and then because it's reasonably priced. And they're supporting fair trade. But to date, sales in Germany simply haven't been sufficient to truly improve the living conditions of fair trade farmers in Laos. Young chef Thomas Müller has always wanted to try out the purple rice. Now he's had the opportunity to create a rice dish with a new and striking color.